So what is a market? Um, and it's basically just a place where assets, it could be stocks or bonds or anything else, are bought and sold. And there are many different types of financial markets. Each one deals with a different type of asset and it serves a different set of customers and it could operate in a different part of the country. So we're looking at the first one. Financial markets differ from the physical asset markets in that real or tangible assets such as machinery, real estate, and agricultural products are traded in the physical asset markets. But financial securities that represent claims on assets are traded in the financial markets. So financial security would be like a stock or a bond. And then in the spot markets, those are markets in which assets are bought or sold for on the spot or right then delivery. But futures markets are markets where someone agrees today to buy or sell an asset at some future date. And usually when you think about future markets, it, futures markets, it's like you are you are going to have a lot of corn to sell in the future so you may sell a futures contract um, to sell corn maybe three months from now when you expect your harvest to come in and this would be if you were a farmer and some other company that uses corn in making food products would buy the futures contract for the amount of corn that you're going to have to sell and then we have money markets versus capital markets. So money markets are the markets in which debt securities with maturities of less than one year are traded. So short-term debt securities are traded in the money market. New York, London, and Tokyo are the major money market centers. Longer-term securities, anything greater than one year, including stocks and bonds, are traded in the capital markets. The New York Stock Exchange is an example of a capital market, while the New York Commercial Paper and Treasury Bill markets are money markets. Then we have primary and secondary markets. Primary markets are markets in which corporations raise capital by issuing new securities, while secondary markets are markets in which securities and other types of financial assets are traded among investors after they have been issued by corporations. So a primary market example would be like an initial public offering by a firm. When a firm offers to sell shares of its stock for the first time, the way to know if it's a primary market is because the company receives money when it sells the stock. A secondary market would be the New York Stock Exchange. If I get online to my Scott Trade account and I just buy AT&T, I'm buying it from someone else that is agreeing to sell it and it's not involving the original company AT&T at all. It's just some other person that could be, let's say in Arkansas, and they are wanting to sell AT&T. So and my trade gets matched up with their sell trade. And then we have public versus private markets. So private markets are where transactions are worked out directly between two parties, but public markets are where you have standardized contracts that are traded on organized exchanges. So we have lots of different ways to talk about financial markets. So why are markets important? Well, in a global context, economic development is highly correlated with the level and efficiency of financial markets and institutions. It's difficult for an economy to reach its full potential if it doesn't have access to a well-functioning financial system. A healthy economy is dependent on efficient fund transfers from people who are net savers to firms and individuals who need capital or who are net borrowers. Without efficient transfers, the economy simply could not function. And then there are things like the level of employment and productivity. Our standards of living would be much lower if we did not have a, an economy that worked. And all you have to do is look at situations where you have third world countries 
and where they don't have an efficient economy and you can see how the standards of living are much lower there. So therefore it is truly essential that our financial markets function efficiently, quickly, and at a low cost. So we're not going to talk too in depth about derivatives. Derivatives are any financial asset whose value is derived from the value of some other underlying asset. For an example, a call option gives you the right to buy a share of stock for a certain price within a certain amount of time. So the call option price is based on the stock's price and it varies over time just like the stock's price varies. So you can use derivatives to reduce risks or to speculate. For an example of risk reduction, suppose that you have an importer's costs that are rising and its net income falls when the dollar falls relative to the Japanese yen. The company could reduce its risk by purchasing derivatives whose value increase when the dollar declines. This is a hedging operation and its purpose is to reduce risk exposure. Speculation, on the other hand, is done in the hope of high returns, but it raises risk exposure.